welcome to Yorkville Congregational United Church of Christ, where we welcome, we serve, and we care for one another. Now it is the time for our announcements. Order forms of the Christmas poinsettias are available in the narthex. The cost is $19. Orders are due with payment today. Please see Kathy Wickens if you have any questions. Today is the hanging of the greens. Our, we're going to enjoy the liturgy at the end of worship today as part of our worship. And afterwards, there will be a light lunch. So please stay and help decorate the church and make it a festive place. Joy Circle reminder, the luncheon will be on um, December 5th. And please see Mary McCracken today if you have not already RSVP'd. You are invited to the tea. Please join us for the tea on December 2nd uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. RSVPs are due in the sign up in the narthex. The annual cookie walk is December 9th. Sign up is also in the narthex. See Sue Kimes or Diane Dillo with questions. The mission trip, yay, we're going on another mission trip. A meeting for parents of students attending the mission trip is scheduled for December 3rd, immediately after church in the meeting room. There is a lock-in on December 1st and 2nd. Permission slips are due and the cost is $20. Please see Robin with questions. Now we begin our worship. Good morning, everyone, on this nice, snowy Sunday morning. If you are able, would you please rise and join me in today's call to worship? May the joy of the Advent season with this message of mighty hope be with you all. And also with you. We been, begin Advent by celebrating the, the expectation that Christ, who came, who comes again to be with us in every age and every place, and who will come again in a glorious finality to consummate the healing work which he began at Bethlehem. He shall come back between nations, and our prayers between many races. They shall lead the sword to his posterity, and the spirit to his green book. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they burn war anymore. And now, would you please join me in today's prayer of invocation. Almighty God, as we begin this season of Advent, remind us again that in the midst of our darkness, you were bringing us peace to calm our anxious spirits and hectic lives. Turn our hearts again toward you. Make us ready to receive your Son, our Deliverer. Slow our pace and give us the blessing of feeling your peace in our spirits. For we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And then please join me in singing hymn number 272. <coughs> the church is one our foundation. One foundation.
Hello, everybody. Do we have a good Thanksgiving? Who ate too much food? I did. <laughs> All right, so we are going to read this book. It's called The First Christmas Night. And if you can't see the pages, it's up there. So your parents can follow along too, okay? So this book is about Jesus and the meeting of Christmas, okay? All right. Twas the very first Christmas when all through the town, not a creature was stirring, there was not a sound. The moon shining bright in a heaven so high gave the luster of midday to the Bethlehem sky. The animals were nestled in warm, cozy places with looks of contentment on each of their faces. And Mary and Joseph, so tired from the road, had just settled in a humble abode. To a Bethlehem stable they had traveled with care. They knew that their baby soon would be there. And then in the stable, a baby's first cry, peace on earth, goodwill, redemption is nigh. He had not a crib, but in a manger instead, the tiny new baby lay down his sweet head. Mary looked down at his cute little nose and silently counted ten fingers, ten toes. As shepherds kept watch on a small nearby hill, their sheep were all silent and sleepy and still. When suddenly in the sky there arose such a sight, one angel then many appeared in the night. The heavens rejoiced as their story unfurled. A baby, a savior, had been born to the world. So the shepherds arose to search for the place to get a close look at the baby's sweet face. Then out of the east there came royalty whose mission was finding the savior you see. When the baby finally, when they finally found the babe they had sought, gold, frankincense, and myrrh were the gifts that they brought. So the wise men bowed down and praised his sweet name. Soon all those who heard would rejoice that he came. And now and we now sorry. And now that we know, we can say with delight, Jesus was born on the first Christmas night. And then there's a long story of Christmas, but I'm not going to read that right now. So, Christmas, right? Yeah. Who is the, re I like to say, who is the reason for the season? Go ahead. It's, I mean, Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the season, right? They're really celebrating his birthday, right? Mm -hmm. So, in all of the Christmas glory, right, there's Santa and our elf on the shelves and the presents and all the snow. Who are we going to remember? Jesus. Jesus. Right. Okay. Can we pray? All right. Dear God, we thank you for this joyous time of year, a time that is filled with celebration. During this season, help us to remember that Jesus is the reason for Christmas. Amen. All right, we are going to go and all sit at the coloring table because you all get to participate in church today. Yay! Yay! <laughs> okay, or you can sit with your parents if you'd like, but you're all invited to go sit at the coloring table. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we have come to a time of prayer here together in person and at home. I invite you to reflect and pray silently or with your family that is with you. Now let's begin our time of prayer.
God, we are so thankful for hostages that have been released in Israel and that the ceasefire continues to just edge a little bit out. God, we ask you when there is a time when we celebrate love, as we come into this Advent season, as we wait for the gift of Jesus, we ask you to be with those who hate. And we ask you to remember and remind us that hate is a virus and love is a cure, God. Now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hope is on the way in the upcoming celebration of the birth of Jesus. And our congregation provides hope to our church family and hope to our community. Knowing how important that is, let us now offer our gifts to God. Now let us receive our morning offering. Please now join with me in the prayer of thanksgiving and dedication. For the wondrous ways this offering with breath hope breathe hope into the community, we dedicate these gifts. For the ways it help us live out God's mission, we dedicate these gifts. Let these gifts strengthen our call to carry out God's justice and mercy. You may be seated as we hear the choir sing, We Are the Church.
As we begin this Christmas season, let us take time to focus. Focus on God's holy presence before our holiday busyness. Before the the shopping and the parties and the pageantry, before we become distracted by seasonal trappings. Let us focus on the one who came to give us life. Let us focus our minds and attention and our hearts affection on Jesus, the one who was born to free us from our sins. People wandering in the darkness have seen a great light, light that shines on those who, have, who live in a land of deep darkness. Our hope, our deliverer, has come. So let us stop and take time to worship as we celebrate the season. This season has so many different traditions that come with it. Some families open Christmas presents on the Christmas morning. Some families open Christmas presents on Christmas Eve. Some families open presents on the day after Christmas because the Christmas season is just too busy. But Christmas traditions are important. They bring us together and help us celebrate the good news of Jesus' birth. They help us to connect to one another. They help us to share God's love with each other and share the compassion and the empathy that we are called to do in Jesus' love for us and our love for Jesus. It's also important for us to remember why we do what we do. As, As Robin mentioned in children's time, right? Jesus is the reason for the season. So as we reflect on the traditions, as we hear about the traditions as they're narrated and spoken about, let us remember and think about why the Advent wreath is so important, why the colors that we have and I wear the pyramids is so important. Because this is the beginning of how we really are the church. This is beginning of the church as we know it. So now let's take time to reflect and share and understand the traditions of Christmas. I think I just went through all this. First, we'll talk about the pyramids and Advent colors. Both visual and performing arts have always been important, been important parts of Christian worship, as well as communicating the Christian faith. The use of music has helped believers to understand their godly hope. Other forms of visual art, like icons and statues, have been used from the beginning to help express various aspects of Christian doctrine and life. The use of colors in altar pyramids, or coverings and banners, are some important visual aids to help Christians express their faith in worship. In the early days of Christian worship, Advent and Christmas were seen as a somber time, much like Lent is today. Purple table coverings were used to speak of Christ's kingship, but the mood was somber. As the mood of Christmas celebrations shifted from being somber to being more joyful, the color used also changed. While purple is still used in some churches during Advent, many Christian churches, like ours, now use blue to represent the kingship of Christ. So today, we bring the royal blue of our coming king into our sanctuary to help us prepare for the one who is coming, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings. And now let's sing, O Come All Ye Faithful.
evergreens. The evergreen wreath that we hang is in a circle with no beginning and no end. It is a reminder of our eternal God. God is Yahweh with Now, the Advent wreath. The Advent wreath, originally an idea from German Lutherans in the 16th century, took its modern form thanks to Johann Hinrich Firchen, a German Lutheran pastor who worked with poor children in the 19th century. He created a wooden ring with 24 small red and four large white candles to help kids count down to Christmas at his mission school in Hamburg. Today, the candles are a reminder of God's love and light in the world as we wait for the birth of Jesus. Now join me in singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 150, verse 1. As we gather in the anticipation of the Advent season, we kindle the first candle, the candle of hope in its flickering light, and we find assurance in the promises of God. We light this candle as a beacon of hope. In the midst of darkness, it reminds us that God's light will always shine. May its flame inspire hope within our hearts and illuminate our path. The people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness on them has light shone. As we reflect on the flickering flame, let us contemplate the hope we find in Christ. In a world filled with challenges, his light guides us, offering hope in times of despair. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we enter this season of Advent, fill our hearts with hope. Help us to see beyond the difficulties of the present moment and fix our gaze on the light of Christ, our eternal hope. Amen.
The next in our story is about the nativity, as referenced in Isaiah 9, verse 6. The nativity is a reminder to us that the creator of the universe is Emmanuel, God with us, the God who is everywhere all the time. For a child has born to us, a son has been given to us. He shoulders responsibility and is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For many of us, one of the most treasured expressions of Christmas is the Nativity. Nativity transports us to that humble stable and that miraculous time when God chose to send his son to our world as a baby born in common surroundings. In this humble place, God reached out to all people, the poor and the wealthy, the simple and the wise, the powerless and the powerful. All who found this holy child knelt in humility before him. Whenever we see a nativity, we find ourselves with Mary and Joseph, with the shepherds and with the wise ones, coming before the manger, overwhelmed by God's expression of love in coming to us. And now let us join in a way in a manger. And now, the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree and Christmas garland are a beautiful and fragrant part of our Christmas celebration. Many families have their own traditions for decorating their trees. Ornaments are made out of popsicle sticks from school, bought from souvenir shops on our travels, or handed down from generation to generation. No matter how your tree is decorated, the Christmas tree with its evergreen leaves that last through our, throughout the harsh winter, reminds us of God's great love. Maker of stars, you were first to hang lights in the darkness, and whether we acknowledge you or not, we find ourselves following your lead on every Christmas tree. And now, um, it's your turn. Some of us seemingly polished and gilded, some of us broken and glued and ordinary. You invite us to hang the full weight of ourselves on your branches, and somehow there we find. You made us all very beautiful. Christmas became to us a come and see, a gather round, and an all together. Come and see the unexpected way in which a family would be made. In this place we gather all together. We pause now to beautify this tree. Planted here, it becomes a solemn remembrance, for it was a tree that we were separated from you. You came to us an ever-present stranger, our unrecognized sustainer. We didn't know, we couldn't foresee the pecu peculiar way you'd make us family, that by a baby in Bethlehem, born, you'd call our siblings from every nation, every people a mosaic of humanity so unlike and, un and unified. Jesus, you are splendor incarnate, and you adorn our lives with your gleaming love.
ooing and aahing over the fun tree. The Christmas poinsettia. The poinsettias are the Christmas flower because of their resemblance to the star of Bethlehem and their winter blooming in southern Mexico. They were once considered weeds, but were used by the Aztecs for dye and medicine. The colorful flowers are actually bracts with inconspicuous true flowers in their center. Mexican folklore tells of a poor child, Pepita, who offered weeds to baby Jesus on Christmas Eve, and the angels transformed them into red flowers, associating red and green with Christmas. Please join me in singing the first verse of O Little Town of Bethlehem. Next, we talk about the Christmas. Here in this place, we prepare for the coming of the Lord. Here, we will remember his advent, his birth in Bethlehem, weak and helpless as an infant. And here, we rekindle our prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, as we await his coming as the bright and morning star. The Christmas remind us of his bright and morning start. prophet, priest, hang stars, crosses, triangles, the Alpha and the Omega, to remind us of his identity, his story, and of the Holy. A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 22. See, I am coming soon. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come, and let everyone here say, Come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as gift.
And now the gifts of Christmas. The tradition of giving gifts has a long history, originally stemming from ancient winter rituals practiced by different cultures. Over time, this custom became part of the Christmas celebration. One of the reasons we exchange gifts during Christmas is because of the heartwarming story of the three wise men giving presents to the baby Jesus. Also in modern, in early modern Europe, there was a tradition where young men from wealthier families would go Christmas begging. This was connected to the idea of gift giving as well. Originally, Christmas gift giving involved people from various social backgrounds, fostering a sense of unity and sharing. However, in the 1800s in the United States, the focus began to shift more towards children and also consumerism has fostered greed instead of love and grace. Today, we recall the traditions that remind us that Advent is waiting for God to be born among us. We are reminded of this as we are reminded how Santa came to be. The beloved figure of Santa Claus has its roots in the story of St. Nicholas, a kind-hearted monk from what is now Turkey, known for his care and protection of children the modern Santa Claus, inspired by the Dutch figure Sinterklaas, was introduced in the United States in the early 1800s by John Pintard. The image of Santa Claus is a right jolly old elf that, we're, that we are familiar with today, comes from Clement Clark Moore's 1822 poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas. These traditions have evolved over time and are celebrated in various ways today bringing joy and togetherness to people of all backgrounds during the holiday season. And now join me in singing We Three Kings. the Christ in Christmas. The Christ in Christmas. It's a time for us to not only enjoy the laughter and the sounds of children feeling comfortable in our sanctuary, in our building, among our church family. It's a time when we laugh and we gather and we share stories. It's also a time for us to reflect on the message of Christmas on the hope that comes with Jesus' birth. We are called to reflect and be transformed by God's presence because God is with us, Emmanuel. And so this is the verse 
that helps us to remember to revere this season, to honor what it is we do and how we celebrate the traditions and take seriously the message of Christ. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Great will be his authority, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, with God's goodness. Jesus has come and will be here to help us understand God's goodness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And so we are called to respond because we are a good news people. We are go tell it on the mountain people. And this is a time where we can use it to deepen our faith as we contemplate what it means to have Jesus be born among us as a human and as he were called to engage in loving acts of kindness and compassion. Now let us pray. Dear gracious God, you are sending Jesus to us, and this is the time of the year where we wait, and we wonder what that means to us. As we celebrate the good news, help us to remember how we are to be, how we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, how we are called to care and welcome and serve all of God's people. Be with the world as we light candles of hope, as there are problems that continue, as unrest continues. May our leaders, may our people, may ourselves find a way to walk through this together, being reminded of your goodness, God, the goodness that calls us to act out of love and compassion. Now as we go forth, we bless, we ask for blessings among this church, we ask for blessings of our families, we ask for blessings in the world that we see the gifts you offer to us. Amen. Now let us rise and sing joy to the world. Hallelujah. As we celebrate the coming of Christ and the hope and the love and the peace and the joy that Christ's birth brings, let us remember to go out and spread the good news of Jesus. Hallelujah.